there's stories like that, like you said, you're like, why have I not heard of this? And the fact that, you know, four or five is, is looking at all these stories yeah. and, you know, even just the stories that you know of or the businesses you've heard of, like Lopez Foods, right? Oh yeah. You don't know that story because you, you know that you see the, their company everywhere, but yeah. you're like, well, why has nobody told this story? Well, and there's, we're getting generational stories now, which I love. Like mm-hmm. if you haven't been to Trump Budos Tacos yet on Southwest 60th in May, oh, yeah. Lupe Garcia is the son of Chilino. And so, but okay. he's not doing his father's Tex-Mex sort of emphasis. Chilinos, yeah. He's gone to Mexico City and he's traveled extensively in Mexico and he especially loved Cozumel in his time there. And he's learning and he's, he's learned right. to make tacos in a more traditional style, it's depending amazing. on which regional Mexican cuisine you're talking about. And they're the best tacos in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Um, and he's doing it, he's, he's utilizing his father's network because they have all those yes. things that put everything together. Right. And I never would say that's clearly beneficial, right? That's sure. all it's gotta be. Never would say that he's done this on his own. But he has had the idea, had the passion, done, made the drive, done the process, invested the money, took the risk. And right now, yeah. he's the guy. I, we, we've been predicting this for a while. It's like one of those, you know, once in future king, white messiah kind of stories that come along all the time. Yeah. And we've been saying there's going to be someone that figures out how to bridge that river. Uh-huh. Like someone who's on the Mexican-American side, does tacos, does whatever, all those traditional taquerias down there. They're going to figure out how to get white people happy on this side of town. Because the problem is, <laughs> right. in, in, in all sincerity, yeah. there's two things happening. Like there's a language barrier when yeah. you go to Southwest 29th. And... And I'm tired of hearing people say, well, they don't speak English. No, you don't speak Spanish. They don't speak Spanish. They're, they're fine in their neighborhood. Yeah. Everything's great down there. They're yeah. killing it, as a matter of fact. But it's also this idea, and I, there's nothing wrong with the idea, that when I sit down for Mexican food, I want margaritas. Well, yeah. a mixed bev license is fairly expensive, and yeah. uh, so there's never been that sort of emphasis down there. Well, Lupe's done that. He's yeah. got a, a full bar with these creative cocktails, and so he's making delicious traditional food with the cocktails, and he's very, very comfortable uh, in both languages, mm-hmm. so much so, and I don't know people how respect how hard this is, he's capable of using puns and double entendres in both languages, that's and amazing. that's a pretty impressive sort of mastery of, of, of a non-native language. Yeah. So uh, I just, those kind of stories are fantastic. So now the, the Hispanic community has been here long enough that the second and third generations, it's the same thing that happened in the Asian district now yeah. where we're seeing Jenny Wen, whose family has Lee sandwiches. She's doing boom boxes will be open this summer where she's doing yeah. vermicelli bowls. So second generation, third generation. So those stories become, you know, a family story and right. you just keep telling that story yeah. and it keeps un- unfolding. And I just, I just have a lot of love for that whole process. I do. Because, you know, as a kid, as, as the middle of three, yeah. you know, your parents have things they want for you. And you, and, and you don't know necessarily that your ideas are going to align with theirs. And so when it does, like I see these families that have these sort of dynasties of whether it's food or sports yeah. or whatever, it's got to be an amazing moment when you realize that, yeah, I, this is me. I can do yeah. this. I, I'm, I'm made for this. I, this is what I'm going to do. Because you choose food service because you love it. Yeah. You don't choose it to get rich. You don't choose it because of the weekends it's off. It's not because of the sex and the power. It's literally because you love yeah. dealing with cranky people who are hungry. Right. And and you get a lot of love and satisfaction out of feeding people well. Mm-hmm.